Northern Brewer takes you where home brewing and craft brewing meet. From pro breweries to home breweries, we live and breathe beer. Craft beer celebrities, homebrew luminaries, brew sessions, and most important of all, lots of great beer. You are watching Brewing TV. Got my yeast starter going. Water is collected. Grains are steeping. Hops are measured out. This is gonna be a great brew day. Oh, hi. Welcome to Brewing TV. You've caught me mm. on a lager brew day. The only way to start a lager brew day is by drinking a nice big mug of lager. Here, Chip, have some Oktoberfest. Drink along at home, Brewing TV viewers. Mmm, yeah, good malt proteins, nice orange-red color, good clarity, bright and shiny malt. I have something to tell you, though. Come here. Come closer. Come closer. Psych! It's not a lager. This is an ale-toberfest. In today's episode, we are going to talk about how to brew lager styles without a true lager fermentation. We're going to start out in my garage brewing a bock. We're going to split this 10 gallon batch in half, try a couple different workarounds for a true lager fermentation. Then we're going to go to Brewing TV correspondent and noted blogger and YouTuber Don Osborne's place, talk about another lager fermentation workaround with him. We're going to show you some cheat codes for lager brewing. Grab a beer, stick around, to the garage. The garage. The lagerage. Today's beer is a Northern Brewer limited edition beer kit for the first quarter of 2012. The Sustainer, part two. You might remember the Sustainer Part 1 from earlier this year. It was a traditional, traditional Bach uh, with some rye and some wheat. It was dry hopped. It was a little too dark, way too hoppy, very not Reinheitsgebot. This is the same theme, but with more rye, less color, same kind of hop profile, same bitterness level. It's a rye Maybach. This is a lager. The kit uses the Y-Yeast 2487 Hellebach. Come here. Come closer. Hellebach is possibly the greatest lager yeast ever. But if you don't have cold fermentation capabilities, you shouldn't deny yourself the pleasure of the sustainer part two. What we're going to do with this 10 gallon batch, doing a concentrated boil. We're gonna split it into fermenters and dilute it down to five gallons in each. We're going to do a fermentation in one with a clean ale yeast. That's what I did for this Ale Toberfest. This was brewed in midsummer with uh, White Labs 029 German Ale slash Kolsch. Wasn't fermented all that cold, but if you choose a nice neutral ale yeast, you can get a clean beer as long as you take care of it. The other half, we're going to do something unorthodox. The boys in the lab over at Y Yeast have reported good results using their Bohemian Lager strain, 2124, but fermented at ale temperatures. I'm going to try that. Sterling, it's an American, newish American, Size replacement, spicy, a little bit of a, like candied orange peel kind of component to it. It's a really nice hop. As you can see, their natural form is a, uh, is a pellet. This is how they grow on the plant. They're unique in the hop world. We call it a Maybach. It's not really a Maybach. It is a lager. <laughs> you can brew it this winter for consumption in my but any style nerd would 
docu points for this beer being too happy. It's too happy for style. It's a little dark for a Maybach. Rye and wheat would not be traditional in it, but we're fermenting it with an ale yeast and a lager yeast at too warm a temperature anyway, so pfft. it's all out the window now. Let's just have fun. One of the things that makes our Rybach uncharacteristically, inauthentically hoppy and delicious is the late addition of a good portion of the syrup to the boil. The way that works is it keeps the boil gravity, the wort gravity low for most of the boil. Hop utilization is affected by the density or the gravity of the wort. So boiling a lower gravity wort gets more bitterness out of the same amount of hops versus boiling that amount of hops in a higher gravity wort. Batch is split, diluted, aerated, added firm cap S. Carboy on the left is getting US05. Carboy on the right is getting Y yeast. 2124 Bohemian Lager. I made a yeast starter for the Bohemian Lager. I'm using two packs of USO5 and I aerated both worts. OG 1064. Even though we're not giving these a true lager fermentation regimen, don't want to cut any corners. Don't want to cut any other corners, I should say. Use a good pitch rate, aerate that wort, ferment it as cool as you can, even with an ale yeast. That is critical. That was a good brew day, just like I said it was going to be. We'll come back, check up on these guys as they progress. Right now, let's go over to Don Osborne's, see about another lager workaround. Right? Right? You guys can't come. He's got a cat. You have to stay here and watch the bark. Cheers, Don. Thanks for having us over. Thanks for coming over. Glad you made it. Chilly. That's pleasant. A Late, late fall morning. Late fall, early winter. All depends on how you look at it. It's always lager season, though. That's my opinion. That's actually not my opinion, because I have to rely That's on the ambient fun. temperatures. Ambient temperatures. We're doing an India black lager today. Yes. I'm taking ownership of it, even though you're doing all the work. We're doing an India black lager. Yes, we are. We're going to stand around and watch. Uh, I brewed it once last year. And the idea was to make um, hoppy black beer style, um, but not use an ale yeast. Uh, it was this time of year when uh, temperatures are cooling off, and it would have been harder for me to, to do it with an ale yeast. And I was doing a California Common style beer. So I thought I'll just use the yeast cake from that. So plenty of yeast, appropriate temperature range, and uh, fermented it with that. Supposed to be pretty big beer, 1080 plus gravity, and um, I don't know about the IBUs, but you know, as as hoppy as a big, almost even like double IPA style. I mean, it's going to be a pretty big hoppy beer. All right, here we go. It's the, we have 16 pounds total, and here is the first bucket. Grain bill for this is mostly Pilsner malt. Um, I think I've made it with two row pale before, but I just happen to have a 50 pound sack of raw pills. So, got that. Got a little bit of chocolate, a little bit of Carafa 2, uh, something like 1.5 pounds of Munich, and I think I have one pound of white wheat. It's supposed to be dark, but not supposed to be super roasty. Um, you know, it's your kind of your Cascadian dark ale is the general goal, but a little bit customized and then with the lager yeast. So this came in right at about 150, so I'm going to count this adequately stirred. It's going to be nice and dark. It's already picking up a lot of color. And I'm going to seal it up and that's how we do it. Let me show you my coldest uh, closet. You can see it's in the corner here. Outside wall, outside wall. The lock's on the outside. Should I be? Whoa. Here she be. Let's see what the temperature is right now. 56 about. 
So when that thing is fermenting at its peak, it'll probably be around 60. So that'll be nice. And uh, yeah, I got a lot of home brew in here. I got a lot of commercial beer. Got some of uh, different new Glarus unplugs. I got some old La Feliz back when it was cork top 750s. Wow. Just That's... got this in the mail. This is from Texas. I think your doorbell oh. rang. Don't you want to go up and check on it? Uh -huh. Oh yeah, I'd love to. <laughs> Where's my Jester King? That's my steam beer. That steam I just, and wife? That I just made. Steam and wife, yeah. She's, and, and I've noticed it's not really generated any additional bubbling or kind of croizing at all. So mm -hmm. I mean, I think it was pretty much done at 1014. I need to prepare my first wort hops. I have half ounce Columbus, half ounce Magnum, 60 minutes, half ounce Magnum, 45 minutes, half ounce Chinook, half ounce Warrior, 30 minutes, half ounce Amarillo. Then that's it for, boy, for a brew day. And then I'm gonna dry hop with two ounces total, another half ounce each of Amarillo, Chinook, Columbus, and Warrior. Well, actually I have a, dun, da, 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 uh, my last year, India black lager that we are going to try at some point. It's my first ever uh, cork top. Oh, Note the I IBL. And uh, so this will be a nice illustration because um, it will not be as big and bright and fresh, but we'll be able to see is it somewhat hoppy? Is it somewhat bitter? Or is it just more of the, you know, the, the malty, the kind of the darker Carafa 2, you know? Cool. Whatever else I have in there. How many gallons is that bottle? Um, well, let's see. It's about five. Five gallons in there? Yeah. <laughs> We've got our work cut out for us. What are some of your general practices for a beer like this? Or for your steam beers, for that matter? Um, I generally shoot for around the middle of a, of a temperature range and uh, whenever possible. Mm -hmm. um, so if it is, I used to think it was 55 to 65, or it's 58 to 68. I'm generally aiming for the low 60s to ferment it in, so I just kind of have to kind of wait for the time of year when I have a room that is a few degrees cooler than that because it'll warm itself up. But uh, other than that, it's kind of just, uh, I just kind of go with uh, what's available. One of my models is kind of cheap and easy, which... <laughs> don't take that out of context. I, I, I don't take it out of context and don't take it to mean crappy or careless brewing either you know right. because I, I believe I make uh, clean beer and I believe it tastes tastes nice but I don't want to overthink it and I don't want to overthrow money at stuff if I don't have to and so I'm happy to just kind of use the yeast and the styles that will work with whatever temperatures I have. Is it your impression that even though this isn't a true cold lager primary fermentation, it's still going to take a little bit longer than an ale yeast at ale fermentation temperatures? I've found that to be true. Yeah. I think so. Haven't you found that to be true? Definitely. Yeah. They just uh, work a little slower. At the lower and you temperatures. And you normally have to be pitching a greater quantity than, than a comparable ale yeast. Right. For this technique, what do you do for a secondary fermentation? I am not... Th these beers, because I'm not in the heart of winter when my coldest room is almost like 40 degrees, my coldest corner basement unheated closet is, you know, that cold. Mm -hmm. So I can uh, almost technically lager a beer in, in that room mm -hmm. uh, without having to use a fridge. And then I'll do primary fermentation of a lager in a slightly warmer room. Okay. But for this beer, I don't have that cold of an area right now right. to do a technical lagering stage. So it will, when it is done with the primary, it will go into a secondary and it will go into the coldest room that I have um, for, you know, a, a period of time. Basically just kind of whenever I need to get it, get the next beer going on tap. It's done when it's done. It's done when it's needed. <laughs> it's done when I need a beer. <laughs> Why are we bringing these up, Don? Because, technically, the more vertebrous area you have... Now, we're uh, trying to reduce the volume, reduce the water, but keep the sugar. So, um, the amount I collected would pretty much max out my brew pot. That's one reason. But the other reason is just to have more surface area, you're going to lose more water. Mm -hmm. So, I'm trying to condense it, you know, and get as much sugar out of the grain as possible. Mm -hmm. 0 0.50 ounces magnum, 60 minutes. Here we go. 45, Chinook and Warrior. 
half ounce of each. All right. I got my last boil edition coming up. I'm doing a half ounce of Amarillo. And uh, it's only 30 minutes left, so I'm not doing any at 15. I'm not doing any at flame out because I'm going to add two ounces um, of dry hops. And to me, I guess, I, I don't know, I, I, I feel like that's going to be as good as adding them, you know, at flame out or better. So this is my uh, India black lager from last year. Same recipe. Similar, very similar recipe. Okay. Probably slightly lower in gravity. Um, and actually, this year I'm increasing the hops because of I wanted it after I was drinking it last year. I thought, oh, you know, it could be, you know, it doesn't need to be none more black, but it could be some more hop. Thanks, Dono. Cheers. Cheers. So this will probably not, well, it will certainly not be as fresh and hoppy, but it should hopefully be a little bit still bitter, like a little more bitter than an average dark. Mm -hmm traditional porter or stout kind of beer, but we'll see. I still get some citrus in the nose, kind of like a very, almost like a candied or dried citrus peel kind of aroma, kind of sweet cocoa-like Cascadian roast malt character. I get some of that hot bitterness still. Mm -hmm. It's there. This is a year old, and so it's quite mellow. But even when this beer was fresh, it did not have quite the hop character that I felt that it could. So I think I added two ounces of hops to this year's recipe. So brewing with the season, brewing with your ambient temperature, what are some beers that you make sure you brew every winter? There are two beers. I always will brew a Pilsner. I uh, used to always make a Czech Pilsner with a lot of Zaz hops. Last year was my first year making a German Pilsner and we sampled that. It was delicious. Um, and that turned out great. And so now I'll be questioning, oh, do I do the German or the, or the Czech? But then I always make a Hellas, because I just love that malty, mm -hmm. light lager. Mm -hmm. Then I'll do maybe one or maybe two more lagers, and that will fluctuate, mm -hmm. depending on, you know, if I haven't made an Oktoberfest for a few years, or I haven't made a Maybach. Don Osborne got me working. This is the uh, excess wort. It's been boiling for an hour on the stove top. You can see it's kind of concentrated. As you can see, I'm kind of splashing it on his lawn furniture. Now I'm going to put it into the main boil. Ooh, yeah. This one looks like it was reduced by about half. There's two kettles of excess wort. This batch sparging is lots of math. Lots of running up and down stairs. Yeah, I just got about uh, 60 pounds of material here doing a... A deadlift. <laughs> this is not going to be my most flattering position. Come on, you son of a... <sighs> Into the ice bath. I have pre-sanitized this entire spoon mm -hmm. and my thermometer. So I get the, the beer going one way, I get the ice water going the other way. So you're always getting um, hot material coming in contact with cool surface. In the winter, when I have way too much snow that I, more than I need, I can put snow all around here in this water. I'll have a little lower water level. Um, but yeah, that with the cold groundwater and the whole thing is cooled down in 10 minutes and it's, I don't have to do my ice water siphon, which I do. And this goes right here. And I need that white bucket, Mr. Dawson, sir. That will go here. This goes like this. I don't unscrew this. Try not to get any uh, tap water into the wort. You know, you kind of bring it around like this. That goes down like that. And then there we go. So now I'm running, instead of like 60 degree water or whatever the tap water is, now I'm running 32, 35. You got to pour it back in. Actually, you will finally be able to do some real work. What? I can figure stuff out, Dono. There you go. But you don't want to splash it, you know, over into the kettle, right? You don't want to do that. I just harvested this last night from my California Common. Should be more than enough yeast to ferment this big beer. It's chilled down. 66 degrees into my 50, what did we say, 56? 
or so degree closet. This thing will be fermenting within uh, the hour, I bet. That much yeast. Hot. So that is it. We'll have to uh, taste it sometime in a uh, number of weeks. I look forward to it. See how it is. Nearly two months later to the day, give or take, since brew day at Don O's house, we're in my basement. Neutral ground. Neutral ground. <laughs> you guys, ease up, ease up. No, no lager battles here. And we're tasting Dono's IBL, and we're going to taste Dawson's Sustain or Split Yeast Experiment. Let's go. Dono. Dono's up. Know. How did it go after brew day until here? Uh, fermented in the primary for two weeks, uh, around 58 to 60 degrees. And then I put it in the secondary for a while, and then I eventually dry hopped it with two ounces of hops. It had dry hops for two weeks, and it's now been in the keg for about two to three weeks. 1082 was the original gravity, and then it got down to 1020, and that was where it stopped. That's where it stopped. Despite the uh, yeast cake, aeration, proper temperature range... The California Common cake that you gave me, yeah. the other half, yeah. my chocolate stout stopped at 1020. Oh. So I think it's a personal problem with it's the, the yeast. yeast. It's not mm -hmm. us. There's it's nature, not nurture. There's definitely not a problem with the beer, though. This is fantastic. Thank yeah, you. There's definitely a, mm -hmm. a black IPA buzz about this. Very, like, mm -hmm. orangey underneath the roasty. But it's just super clean. It's all about the coffee-ish like kind of sweet coffee mocha dark malt character plus all these intense pacific northwest hops i wanted uh more hop aroma than last year so i did up the dry hops a little bit that comes through i think you also get a little bit of the roast aroma even though that i don't think there's roast malt there's a carafa three Mm -hmm. um, but you get, like you were saying, coffee is kind of an apt word. And the flavor has some hot bitterness, but also some bitterness from those malts, mm -hmm. which does kind of come off as a coffee yeah. flavor. But then it's balanced by the residual sweetness, too. Mm -hmm. Which I, I mean, intended or not, I, I like that in this mm -hmm. beer. It's kind of like a cushiony pillow for my taste buds. Yeah. Against all those sharp edges. Cushiony pillow for my taste buds. Sharp edges. High five, Charlie. Yeah. This one is a little over 8%, so it doesn't really taste like it, though, does no, it? No, it's very smooth. There's no alcohol taste at all, or yeah. even in the aroma, yeah. if you think about it. No, this tastes um, like it could but be yeah, a 4 will or 5 be, percent This or... will be fine mm -hmm. in, in a year or two. You know, I'll, I bottled some. Oh, so. fine still, not fine finally. Right, it won't, <laughs> it won't be good in a year because it stinks now. It is a lager yeast, but it's not a pure lager yeast, but... It's the California Common Lager Yeast. You can ferment it like 58 to 68 mm -hmm. or something like that. And uh, I used my uh, November basement in St. Paul, and I made it. And pretty soon I'll be doing more of a pure lager yeast uh, shortly as the weather has continued to get colder. <laughs> Good job, Don. Cheers, Don. Thank you, fellas. Round two and three. Sustainer. In our right hands, we've got the version fermented with... Safe Ale US05, American Ale Yeast. Even though this is a lager in the left hand, we've got Y Yeast 2124 Bohemian Lager. <laughs> Here's the deal. These were fermented side by side. The lager yeast was not lager. These were both fermented at 66 to 68 Fahrenheit, oh. side by side, ambient basement temperature. They were not given a cold secondary. They were just left in the carboy as the basement slowly cooled down to about 62 degrees, kegged at five weeks after dry hopping for two weeks with sterling, and I just chilled them down to carbonate them so they both got a fair amount of chill haze. What was the gravity rundown? 1064, it was an extract batch, it was 10 gallons, split into two fermenters and then pitched with different yeast. They both finished at 1014. Oh. Identical FGs. What do you think about the lager yeast fermenting at that warmer temperature? That's kind of somewhat uh, unusual. Orthodox. Yes. I, I'd heard from the boys in the lab at Y yeast that fermentation with the Bohemian lager strain at above normal <clears throat> lager temperatures can result in a clean tasting beer. 
So, yeah, I wanted to try that. I would have suspected that a lager yeast at a warmer temperature would throw off more, I don't know, fruity characteristics somehow, maybe? That's kind so of what I was expecting, but this is definitely the cleaner of the two batches. Totally. Ironically, it behaved like you'd expect a lager yeast to. In primary, it threw off a lot of rotten egg sulfur okay. aromas, and that dissipated over time. I don't think it dissipated quite as much as it would have if it had had a, uh, a proper cold secondary. There, I still get a little bit of sulfur edge. I think I smell less in the lager yeast beer. And there is kind of a, I think there's kind of like a fruitiness in the U, USO5 mm -hmm. aroma. That's not bad. The O5 definitely tastes more aggressive. Mm -hmm. Hops, bitterness, stringency. I kind of compare this to like, even though it's a lager recipe with the ale yeast, it comes out tasting kind of like a rye IPA. I definitely get rye flavor out of both of these. I feel like the distinction, like you can taste it individually a little bit better in the lager version. The hops aren't, kind of, the oh, hops aren't kind of doing battle with it as much here. It's definitely yeah. more of the highlight. This is awesome. This is almost like, tastes almost like an Oktoberfest on cask. In the strangest way. I'm just more struck by the fact that you could push a lager yeast, a pure lager yeast, as we were talking about my hybrid lager yeast, to that warm of a temperatures yep. and still get this quality of a result. I wouldn't have thought that, oh, I'm going to use this lager yeast that has an upper end range of maybe like 58. I'm going to mm -hmm. ferment it at 68. Mm -hmm. You know, I wouldn't have thought that that would be a good idea. I would have use the California common log yeast, but like this not only tastes still, I think, clean without any defects, but it also got down to a, probably a better terminal gravity because it was very happy to be nice and warm. So you're saying if you can't really ferment a log yeast at the proper temperature, just ferment it at an improper temperature. What's the worst that could happen? You get some beer. <laughs> <laughs> what other beer would you consider doing the 2124 with what other ale do you think that 2124 would play nicely with what other ale i think Style it'd be killer ale. in beer to guard blonde ales alt beer or some multi-year multi sure. ales mm -hmm. whatever that amber, might be. an amber ale would be nice probably with this maybe even an india black ale or an india black lager an ibl an ibl what a novel idea boom someone should make <laughs> one of those <laughs> whatever your temperature Whatever your yeast, to thine own self be brew. That's Shakespeare. This is Brewing TV. Thank you for watching. All for brew. Brew for all. Brew for all. Cheers, guys. Cheers. This is my job. I may end up like a boss. It cost four hundred dollars. <laughs> it's delivered on the back of a mastodon. So let's get it on. You sure you don't want a hand? I got it. I'll rock it for the people. You need to chisel it out of the granite carton that they shipped it in. Learned how to bottle and cork tops from a brewing TV episode. Yeah, I, I haven't learned how learned. to open them. You're doing it right. Come on, girly hands. All yeah, that. like how you how you siphon, how you separate. Like, I mean, as long as the beer is turning out good, you're not doing anything wrong, right? That's what I think. That's what I think too. Well, thank you <laughs> for agreeing with me. Let's 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 yell some more. We gotta find something to fight about.